In this video, let's try some multiple choice questions about writing exponential functions using equivalent forms. This is AP Precalculus Topic 2.4. If you appreciate the content, please give it a like. Number 1. Which of the following functions is an equivalent form of the function f of x equals 3 times 4 to the 2x power? We are starting off with a 4 in this position. Most of the answer choices have a 16 in that spot. But I see the 4 to the second power right here. Maybe we can somehow separate off the x to make the 16. Let's use properties of exponents. We know that when you raise a power to another power, you multiply. So c to the a, all raised to the b power, is c to the a times b power. But of course, this property is reversible. So if we are given c, and then the exponent is a product, like a times b, we should be able to rewrite this as c to the a, all raised to the b. In the same way, we should be able to rewrite 4 to the 2x power as 4 squared, all raised to the x power. And then just bring down that 3, and I think we have our answer. 4 squared is 16, so we end up with 3 times 16 to the x power, and the answer is b. Number 2, g of x is equal to 4 times 9 to the x over 2 is the same thing as 1 half x. As on the last problem, we can rewrite this part of it as 9 to the 1 half power to the x power. Now, 9 to the 1 half power is the same thing as the square root of 9, which is 3. So we end up with g of x equals 4 times 3 to the x power, and the answer is u. On number 3, I notice that all of the answer choices have x all by itself in the exponent whereas in the original problem, we have x minus 2. So I need to somehow get the uh, negative 2 away from here. Properties of exponents to the rescue again. We know that c to the a times c to the b equals c to the a plus b. But this property is reversible. So if we are given c to the a plus b, we can rewrite this as a product c to the a times c to the b. Similarly, c to the a minus b will equal c to the a times c to the negative b. And that's exactly what we have right here. 4 to the x minus 2 power can be rewritten as 4 to the x power times 4 to the negative 2 power. A negative exponent drops you down to the denominator like this. So 4 to the negative 2 power is 1 over 4 squared, which is really 1 over 16, which I will put in the front of the 4 to the x power. So we have h of x equals 3 times 1 over 16 times 4 to the x power. Obviously, 3 times 1 over 16 is 3 over 16. So we have h of x equals 3 over 16 times 4 to the x power, and the answer is a. Number 4, first of all, m of x is equal to 36 to the 1 half x power. 1 half x is the same as x over 2. All of the answer choices have a plain x as the exponent, so I need to separate this x away from the rest of it m of x will equal 36 to the 1 half power, all raised to the x power. 36 to the 1 half power is the same as the square root of 36, which of course is 6. So we are left with m of x equals 6 to the x power. And the answer is r. Number 5 is a little bit different. It says what is the value of h at 1? So h at 1 means we need to plug in 1 for x. So we have 5 
times three to the negative one half power. A negative exponent drops you down to the denominator. So on the next step, we will have h at one is equal to five times one over three to the one half power. The negative exponent just drops you down. However, three to the one half power is the same thing as the square root of three. So now we have five times one over radical three. But that gives you five over radical three. So the answer is D. Number six, the function f is given by f of x equals two to the x power. And the function g is given by g of x equals f of x divided by eight. For which of the following transformations is the graph of g the image of the graph of f? Well, first of all, f of x divided by eight is the same thing as one over eight times f of x. A one-eighth in the front like this is a vertical dilation. So clearly, g of x is a vertical dilation of f of x by a factor of one-eighth. Only problem is, that's not one of the answer choices. Hmm. In a previous video, we learned that every horizontal translation of an exponential function can be rewritten as a vertical dilation. Similarly, every vertical dilation can be rewritten as a horizontal translation. So that's what we are going to do. And by the way, we already know that the answer will be t or y, a horizontal translation. Substituting two to the x power in for f of x gives us this. We also know that eight is the same thing as two to the third power. So let's make that substitution so we can have like bases. All right, it's going to be very helpful that we have base two and another base two. We know that a negative exponent drops you down to the denominator. So one over two to the third power is the same thing as two to the negative three power. So now we have this. Properties of exponents. When you multiply with like bases, you add the exponents. X plus negative three is the same thing as X minus three. And G of X equals two to the X minus three power is a horizontal translation by positive three of the original function two to the X power. In other words, G of X is a horizontal translation three units to the right. The answer is Y. Number seven, the function F is given by F of X equals three to the X power. The function G is given by G of X equals F of X to the b power, where b is negative. Which of the following describes the relationship between the graphs of f and g? Here are the two facts we are given. Let's substitute three to the x power in for f of x. So we have g of x is equal to three to the x power raised to the b power. When you raise a power to a power, you multiply. So that gives us g of x equals three to the bx power. We were also told that b is less than zero. b is negative. So for example, imagine that b is negative two. Under those circumstances, g of x would equal three to the negative two x power. What are the transformations? We have learned that a negative sign in the front on the inside of a function is a reflection over the y-axis. Um, it's like when we would have negative b times x minus h. If we have something like this, this negative sign is a reflection over the y-axis. Also, ignoring the negative sign for a moment, the two represents a, a horizontal dilation. And because the horizontal transformations are always the opposite of what they appear, it's a horizontal dilation by a factor of one-half the reciprocal of this. Putting this back in terms of b, we could call this a horizontal dilation by a factor of the absolute value of one over b. When I look back at the answer choices, I'm looking for these two transformations. So the answer is i, which says the graph of g is a combination 
of a horizontal dilation of the graph of f and a reflection over the y-axis. Number 8 is a little bit more straightforward. k of x equals 9 to the x power is equivalent to which of these? I'm betting it's going to be either t or b because I know that we can write that 9 as 3 squared. So this would be 3 squared to the x power. And when you raise a power to a power, you multiply. So we get k of x is equal to 3 to the 2x power. So the answer is t. Number 9. The function f is given by f of x equals 2 to the x power. The function g is given by g of x equals 2 to the x times 2 to the a, where a is positive. Which of the following describes the relationship between the graph of f and the graph of g? Reversing the order on these gives us g of x equals 2 to the a times 2 to the x. Remember, 2 to the x is f of x. So we have g of x is equal to 2 to the a times f of x. This is clearly a vertical dilation of f of x because we are multiplying f of x by some constant in the front. None of the answer choices say vertical dilation. However, we have learned that when it comes to exponential functions, every vertical dilation can be rewritten as a horizontal translation and vice versa. So let's see if we can rewrite this vertical dilation as a horizontal translation. So by the way, right now we can guess that the answer will either be i or s. When you multiply like bases, you add the exponents. So g of x will equal 2 to the x plus a power. And just like that, we are looking at a horizontal translation. And because the horizontal transformations are always the opposite of what they appear, this will be a horizontal translation by negative a. So the answer is s. Hey guys, don't forget to like and subscribe. But also, if you found this video helpful, there's a lot more where that came from. You can click the upper link, which will take you to the whole unit playlist. Or you can click the lower link, which will take you to the next video in the playlist. See you there.